In this day and age, when even BMW's little M3 gets a V8, what do you do with the big cars? You do this. Welcome to the new M6, which now gets a V10. Let's go for a ride, boys and girls. Find your seat belts and put on your diapers. Now, of course, the heart of the matter in our M6 is the heart of the matter, the motor. V10 giving us 500 horsepower, 380 some odd foot pounds of torque. But the thing you'll notice right away is the beautiful note that comes out of this thing. And it sounds as good accelerating from 10 to 30 as it does from 40 to 80 or beyond. Helping immeasurably with the power delivery is, thank you BMW, a six-speed manual in our test car. This is actually a no-cost option as I read the build sheet. However, I've got some gripes. The clutch travel is kind of longish and not really linear. The transmission has its other weird BMW thing where it pops in and out of every gear. There's a noticeable detent. Make that a really big detent from gear to gear, and that makes me nuts. But your favorite drivetrain toy in this car is that one right there on the steering wheel, the M button. Hit that, and whoa. I get the full dose of additional throttle aggressiveness and sharpened up steering and handling response. You can see some things that indicate what mode I'm in. There's an M indicator on the dash, the M dynamics mode indicator below that. Here we have EDC. There are a couple of notches on this guy. Those are different degrees of aggressiveness. And you can override that manually here, but I've got it all set to come on full bore when I hit M. And it's really frightening. Bottom line, this guy puts out 100 horsepower per liter. That's impressive territory. 4.6 is your 0 to 60 time. That's pretty neck snapping. The downside, 1117 are your EPA mileage ratings. So luckily, this car cost 100 grand because it automatically filters out those who couldn't afford the gas. Okay, now come inside, cabin tech. Let me show you some things going on here. Now we've seen this iDrive situation before. Luckily, there's a whole new iDrive coming a model year or so, hence, it's a big old wide screen though, widest in the business, and I really like that, and BMW's graphics quality has always been excellent. The navigation system is still DVD based on this car, that's your second slot down here. Above here is your entertainment drive, that's where your music discs go, and then you've got this little dealio here inside the console, which lets you hook up your iPod, a USB thumb drive, or a regular media player through the aux jack. And that yummy sound comes out of a Logic 7 system, which means it'll do synthetic surround from a digital stereo source. It's 11.2, 11 speakers and two subs. Now here's where this car has a little bit of a tech shortcoming. Right in front of me, I don't know if you can see that, that's the heads-up display. But it's not as good as the one we just tested in the BMW X6. The actual printing, if you will, of the image superimposed on the road is kind of washed out. And in many conditions, I can actually see the orange background of the uh, projector, which you're not supposed to see. That's supposed to fade out. So the overall impression of this car, this is a vehicle that is a big coupe. That's a car that can be a grown-up's hot rod. And it says, I'm richer than you and I like fast cars. And let's face it, that statement is why you buy one of these. I gotta tell you, we've had more compliments on this car than anything we've reviewed in months. It's a looker, and part of it is this carbon fiber roof panel. The basic idea is reduce weight up here, and you move the center of gravity down just a smidge, but every bit helps. Let's price our M6. It's rather cutely slotted at $99,000, but of course that's BS, because you gotta add the destination charge and $3,000 gas guzzler tax. Now we're at 103. The major tech toys, 1,200 additional for the heads-up display, 400 for iPod USB. The one nice thing is the manual gearbox is a freebie, you just have to ask for it. <laughs>